Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Africa, actually in Africa in Decatur at the Decatur Area Arts Council where the Africa exhibit is up for the months of June and July. And we're here on this particular day in June because on this day, the art ambassador from Nigeria to the United Nations is in Decatur. And he not only knows much about this art from Africa, he's gonna help us through the exhibit, but he also has some of the art pieces that you'll see here today. And E.B. Alao, it's, it's fascinating. Here you are, you're, you're, you're in Decatur because you have friends yes, in Decatur who have traveled right. to Africa and you've gotten to know them. Yes. Um, but you actually live in New York most of the time as that's you're posted right. with the United Nations. Yes. But it must be a, a, an unusual assignment to be an <laughs> art ambassador for our country. That's, that's kind of fun, isn't it? Yes, it's fascinating. And uh, thank you, Mark. It's just really wonderful uh, to be here and to have you here. Uh, I wasn't uh, expected to come to the Midwest to uh, <laughs> talk less, come to a show and be a part of a show mm -hmm. about Africa. But it's been a wonderful last uh, four days that uh, I've been around. And uh, of course, today is the big opening. Yes, yeah. but uh, being the Art Ambassador is, uh, is really wonderful. It's uh, giving me the opportunity to be able to express a lot of uh, things that I had, that I harbored as a child and uh, what I knew art could do. Uh, in Africa, generally, we use art uh, not only for the beauty, but also for therapy, for character development, character education. And uh, so being able to use it in the platform mm -hmm. of peace building has been very rewarding. And uh, so I'm very thankful for it. I get to uh, use my art uh, during peace negotiations. Uh, not only at the United Nations, even in other places that I've traveled mm -hmm. to around the world, if two communities or three communities are having a conflict, I get the opportunity to sit them down and say, let's just talk about mm -hmm. uh, what's uh, happening. Let's talk about art. Let's mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, we begin to discuss art, maybe discuss a book. Uh, one particular piece that I use a lot in my uh, discussions with people is called True Miracles, uh, which is one of the pieces I will talk about uh, upstairs this evening. Uh, it's inspired by the life of an oyster. And uh, as you know, the most extraordinary thing about an oyster is this that irritations get into its shell. Yeah. The oyster doesn't like the irritations, yeah. but when it sees that it cannot dispose of the irritation, it chooses it to do the loveless thing an oyster can never make, which is a pearl, <laughs> that if there are irritations in our lives, mm -hmm. there's only one prescription to make a pearl. Mm -hmm. We have to be a pearl of patience with a lot of love poured into it, but let us always make pearls. Yeah. And it takes a lot of hope, faith, and love to do mm -hmm. it. Yesterday, I was at a, a school, uh, not really a school, it's a, a called the Boys and Girls Club of oh, Decatur. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had the opportunity to work with some children. Yeah. And uh, you know, children so innocent and they tell yeah. you what's on their mind. So I shared the story of the oyster yeah. and the painting yeah. with them. So I asked them that, do you guys have any irritations at all? <laughs> you know, little kids. And some of the, a lot of them oh, put up yeah. their hands, say, my brother. Dad. Exactly. <laughs> it just, I mean, I could not stop laughing. And they say it very freely mm -hmm. and very innocent. But it is true because these children, you know that no matter how much your brother or your sister irritates you, you can't ever get rid of them. That's or right. your mom or your dad. So right. you've got to live with them. And you, you know, have to make the part. most out of it, don't you? And you exactly. have to make beautiful things out of your life because it's all there, like, like the oyster does. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And so I really just enjoyed that. Yeah. They answer that way, say that, well, I, I will learn to forgive my brother. <laughs> Imagine if we can just keep that as adults, mm -hmm. you know, not just think about eradicating or right. taking people out of our lives who irritate us or who yeah. do bad things to us, but to love them. The oyster loves the irritation, the dirt particles that enter its shell so much by pouring enzymes yeah. on it until it turns to a pearl. So much love, 
makes pearls out of wrong memories. Art, you know, music, literature, visual arts that's right. are something everybody in the world has in common. Yes. This is your piece. Yes. And I'm going to put is. my glasses on so I can see it better because it's a, it's so colorful and it's it's you, Evie. It's you. you. It's colorful like you are. It's called Mortal's Feelings. Yes. What 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 are you conveying? So in this, this uh, it, a lot of my pictures are actually this is typical of a lot of them. They are very colorful. They are very bright uh, because. Um, I think, I mean, there are lots of things that come from the soul, which is what uh, art is about, but also where we grew up in, uh, where we come from, impacts the artwork that we do. Nigeria is only 14 degrees north of the equator, mm -hmm. so we are much closer to the sun. Mm -hmm. We see things a lot brighter. So many artworks that come from that part of the world, even if the artist uh, doesn't intend to, they end up being very bright and colorful. Mm -hmm. uh, I just happen to have joy as one of the themes that I try to express mm -hmm. uh, through my art, that anyone looking at my artwork, uh, no matter what they have gone through, through, through the day, that maybe they might experience a little bit of joy, the feeling of joy. Uh, the the mortal the, the what the happiness which is part of why I call mm -hmm. it mortal feeling. Mm -hmm. There's also a part of it which is that uh, mortal feelings lead us to immortal living. Uh -huh. You know that some of the ordinary yeah. things that we do in life. You know dancing, jumping, oh, yeah. giving, mm -hmm. drumming. That the, the conglomeration of them, a lot of them end up being immortal, end up helping make us immortal. So that's the yeah. meaning of the title. Um, art and music are very important to me, and I will talk about it, I think, with a different piece. On your uh, next later. piece, exactly. actually, it's about music too. Let's yes. go over to it and see it. And this also, again, is very colorful. <laughs> Thank um, you. A different scheme of colors, but very colorful, and again, music. Is, is, is a big theme for you, isn't That's it? That's right. So I think uh, for any artist and vice versa, even for musician, uh, whenever you are making your artwork, you do think of music. Um, I like to think that every human being has a soundtrack to their life, mm -hmm. that even if it's not existing music, there's something that you are thinking of mm -hmm. that is music in you. And uh, so I often have that. I will think about the music, I think, I try to uh, condense the music in my uh, work. And, uh, so art is frozen music, if art is frozen no, music... No, wait, no, wait, did you say art is frozen music? Yes, yes, <laughs> no, art is frozen music. I love it's, that. Uh, it's something that I uh, coined out of, uh, it comes from the traditional, <laughs> so because you know, we do see uh, music, we don't see any difference between the act of making music mm -hmm. and the act of, you know, painting pictures yeah, yeah. or reading poems. Are you a musician the, yourself? I I try. I dabble into it. I write music a lot. Yeah, uh, in yeah. fact, the piece for uh, my Firefly story that will be performed tonight, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the paintings that uh, won a Scholastic uh, Book Award mm -hmm. in the, here in the United States. So I wrote the music yeah. for that. I'm making it into a movie. I, I noticed something else here that, yes. that, I, that I have not seen in other paintings. I can see the bones oh. in these people. Yes. Is, is there a reason why you're showing us that? Yes, thank you very much for asking that, Mark. Now, I use, uh, in, in a lot of my pictures, first of all, they are multicolors. You'll see that the man here, you mm -hmm. know, orange, feet here, blue, mm -hmm. red, uh, you know, green. Um, so I use multicolors to make the people. Uh, so the reason for that is that I try to make something that everyone can identify with, no matter what skin color mm -hmm. they have. But also I emphasize muscles and bones. Um, when I was a child, I mean, I've been painting for as long as I can remember, but uh, when I got to be about 9, 10, 11, uh, I started having these ideas that, you know, maybe I can do more with the art than 
what I have seen in books. Mm -hmm. So I was I was started developing the idea that well maybe I should make all the people look alike in my pictures that if the person is coming from the Igbo tribe or coming from the Yoruba tribe mm -hmm. in Nigeria or Hausa or they are coming from Egypt or they are coming from Europe, whether they are black skin, whether they are white skin, whether they are yellow skin, that they will look at the picture and can identify with it mm -hmm. and therefore be able to get into the story. I think one of the problems that we have with the way art is shown in a lot of the world is that instead of helping people to see the story of the artwork, we just say that, oh, this is art from Africa, this is art from Europe, this is art from mm -hmm. America. And so where the art is coming from becomes the big story instead of the actual story that is in the mm -hmm. artwork. Mm -hmm. So when people look at it, they just see region or they see the identity that you know, they associate the images with mm -hmm. instead of what actually yeah. the artist is trying to say. And that's an interesting thing about this exhibit is because all the various countries of Africa, yes. they're, not, they're not staged in this region, this region, this region. They're all together, aren't they? And that's that's right, sort of, that's it goes right. with your story. That's, that's Let's look at some of these musical it. instruments yes. because <laughs> we, were, we were talking about the topic of music and how it fits in with, with your painting. That's right. And that, and yes. that music is, and that art, <laughs> art is frozen, is frozen music. music. Yes. And one of the, this is really neat because you see a great yes. variety here. That's of, right. You of see all these drums. All yeah. You see Africa. the talking drum. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very. Uh, you, you find it in West Africa, you find it in Ghana, you find it in this Nigeria. Here? Yeah, okay. the talking drum. Can so I touch it? Yes, yes, yes. You see, it's, uh, I mean, you usually use a uh, data mm -hmm. dog to, a bone? that's right. Yeah. So you used to beat mm -hmm. it, and, uh, and then you pull the strings, you pull uh, all those, yeah. and it will give various sounds. So you hang oh, it. Oh, so it tightens you hang it. it. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you can use it to say good morning, you know, good afternoon, <laughs> good evening. It will just give all the vocal intonations mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. you use it. So that's particularly West African. Uh, the djembe drum, which is, you see the small uh, copy of it That's here. this one here. That's right. Yeah. So I would say the djembe is the universal drum of Africa. Uh, now we have it a lot in the Middle East and mm -hmm. uh, of course in America because many people yeah. use the djembe. But uh, it's, uh, you, can, you will find it in Egypt, you will find it in Tunisia, Nigeria, yeah. Ghana, Ethiopia, South Africa, Namibia, a, Kenya, everywhere. A Mabira. A Mabira. Yes. Is that right? Mabira. That's right. A, a That's thumb right. piano? Yes, yes, wow. yes, yes. <laughs> so it's a real it's interesting instru instrument. It's a, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it, we call it, uh, we, we call it Papa Lolo, it's, uh, that's in Nigeria, but mm -hmm. it's different names depending where it's coming from. This is also and, uh, a thumb yes, piano. exactly, exactly. Yeah. Huh. So, you know, ta, ta, it gives a, a sound like that. And, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's, we did half piano as you have it uh, from here for a long mm -hmm. time. So this is what we use to produce music. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and of course, you know, they, we didn't write music down. So musicians, you just use things like this mm -hmm. that are, in fact, I'm really impressed that uh, this is uh, a part of the show because it's not so easy to find instruments like this mm -hmm. around. Uh, I don't think any music stores make this no. uh, anymore. No, these are uh, on loan from uh, various art museums. That's yeah. right. Very nice. And then of course you have things like the shakere, so which uh, we, we use a lot. Uh, so this is uh, uh, it's very pretty much Nigerian, and mm -hmm. that's so shekere is uh, used all over, uh, si similar to the way the tambourine is used yeah, here, yeah. I think. And uh, so it's a, it's a very wonderful sounding instrument. Sometimes you can use it to imitate rain, and uh, so the uh -huh. music of the rain, yeah. and it's, yeah. uh, it's real beautiful. And I paint it a lot, as you can see. 
in one oh, of the paintings Oh, sure enough, here. there it is. That's right. So it's very good visually, and then also to identify mm -hmm. yeah. shadows. So these are drums that you play uh, sitting down. The Ngoma drum, of course, that's from the eastern part of Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular one is from Zimbabwe. And uh, it's, uh, you, also, you have bigger drums, I mean, drums that are maybe the size of this whole arrangement here yeah. that uh, are used in huge festivals. Yeah. Ebi, yes. you can't talk about African art without talking about masks. Yes. Because masks go way back in time, don't mm -hmm. they, with how yes. people were expressing themselves. That's right. Uh, masks are very important in the context of the traditional Africa because uh, masks help us to put on a character uh, just like acting. Mm -hmm. uh, while we still retain who we are on the inside, mm -hmm. we are able to play different parts. So you have them for entertainment, uh, still up to today, entertainment of children. So people will wear masks and, you know, sometimes they will scare the kids mm -hmm. or, you know, they, or they will invite them. They, they are wearing a mask, they are smiling, mm -hmm. you know, all yeah. the time so that, you know, be happy, be joyful. So they always have various purposes like that. Um, as you know, in uh, the West, uh, so when an exhibit is not put together like this, uh, I believe that uh, uh, Sue and the Art Council will have a lot of the text oh, sure. uh, to come, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this uh, uh, later right. on today. Right, they'll all be described. Right. All these. That's right. But some of these, E.B., they're downright scary. Were they trying <laughs> to be scary? Were they trying, I mean, they're telling uh, scary stories? Well, not necessarily. They were just uh, stylized. Uh, so usually they are masks that look like actual people. Mm -hmm. So they elongate, elongate the head, if it's someone that has an elongated forehead, mm -hmm. for example, or, you know, so they will, they will emphasize the art or and make it abstract, uh -huh. just as the Cubist did with art. Uh -huh. You know, so they will, uh, they will take a feature, you know, like a nose, they will make it extraordinarily larger than mm -hmm. the rest of the face and uh, so that's why uh, they are like that and you will see a lot of masks in uh, cubist art right. uh, which uh, Picasso actually uh, had a lot of masks Picasso and Bragg they did mm -hmm. collect a lot of masks from Africa and one of his famous paintings in the at the Museum of Modern Art that is about the woman uh, swimming or bathers, mm -hmm. they they were all made with African masks. Is that right? And, uh, yes. So I think uh, the what uh, the ancestors did with this mask was uh, they really did go deep into making characters and uh, actually making modern art that mm -hmm. many people didn't realize at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. That's it was uh, inspiring to, like you say, to people like Picasso, that yes. was inspiring to him because he was always looking for a different way to look at reality exactly, too, wasn't Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. And so that's, uh, that's the important thing about the mask. Uh, now for this particular mask, uh, oh my goodness, they tell <laughs> such beautiful stories. Oh, they are, and they so, are beautiful. And you can look at this one, for example. So it's a mask, it's a festival mask, you can easily tell from the beads you know, uh, around it. So the, the masquerade will wear this mm -hmm. mask and, you know, dance around which, uh, in fact, the dancer tonight is going to be, wear, for one of the dances, is going to wear uh, a mask to perform it as well. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. so, so they will wear uh, this mask, they will come into the arena and, you know, he's uh, kind of doing all kind of things. Sometimes it's the, he's getting taller or he's getting shorter. He's uh, rolling, mm -hmm. maybe try to express a, a sudden, suddenness of an event. Yeah. And uh, so they are usually very, a lot of energy, very fast and yeah. very, you know, just beautiful. M maybe okay. art is frozen dancing too. Yes, maybe. yes, yes. Maybe. It's, uh, Come on over here and show me, <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of frozen, mm -hmm. of art and frozen music. Yes. This is a third piece that's, yes. that's in the exhibit. This is one of yours as well. Visions of Ezekiel. The, the, this show, this is called Visions of Ezekiel. Yes. It has some music 
pictured right. in it, but yes. it's not really about music. Is yes, it? so it's a religious. So all good art can be said to have two characteristics. Uh, the, that one is that they tell a story they, from artist to the observer. Mm -hmm. So if someone has never seen something before, like a chair, we can either articulate mm -hmm. or we draw the picture and say, this is a chair, then they know what we are talking about. But the second characteristic which all African art have, I think, is that they possess a sense of mystery. You know, the quality that makes us want to keep spending time with them. Mm -hmm. You know, like the mask, you know, we say, is this scary or, mm -hmm. you know, what mm -hmm. else is there in this? So they naturally invite us to decode the mystery that they have. So because of that mystery, what people believe in, religion, always comes through in art. Um, whether they are Christians, whether they are Muslims, whether they are Buddhists, mm -hmm. whether they have no religion at all, that is still spirituality, uh, or they are traditional religion. So one way or the other, they come through, we are closest to our soul in the through the art. Mm -hmm. And uh, so being that I've raised a Christian, a lot of my pictures are not only inspired by the colors of Africa, which I love, but by certain things that I have seen or read in the Bible and in an attempt to understand them. Ezekiel was a prophet that was asked to go minister to the Valley of Dead Bones. And uh, so it's just this valley that is an Israeli a prophet or a Jewish prophet that was asked to go uh, speak to them at a time when Israel was at a very low uh, mm -hmm. place. So he went to minister to them, he saw it in a vision and the host of army rose again. So they came back alive. So just a fantastic vision like that and it describes it as there is a river of life that brings life to everything on its path. Mm -hmm. So in this painting, I made it uh, surrealistic, like mm -hmm. a metamorphosis from bone to life. So as soon as the river of life touches, the, the, I mean, the person comes back alive. Mm -hmm. That what situation is there in life that we cannot revive mm -hmm. if bones can be brought back alive. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's the idea there, that to give a message of hope to anyone, mm -hmm. uh, someone seeking it. So artists can sometimes also, uh, at least in the African society, serve the purpose of being encouragers of the soul so that if someone is down on their luck, maybe you can use a story through mm -hmm. your art to talk mm -hmm. them out of it. Yeah. So that's this one, and you see that in this whole section, there's a lot that uh, the yeah. Art Council has put together. So I will say it's all religions. Yeah. You see the Islamic uh, uh, mask, uh, the, the Islamic mask Islamic up there, that's, there, the rug. Exactly. Oh, that exactly. could be used as a prayer rug, I assume. That's right. And that's made right. in Africa. Exactly. And then uh, here's an example of, of, of some yes. Christian art. This yes. is the crucifixion. So this is batik. This is actually batik. batik. So it's mm -hmm. not uh, made as a painting, but you can see just the artistry there. Mm -hmm. So it's a crucifix. It's like a black figure as the figure mm -hmm. of Christ there. So, so religion, uh, we can't uh, ever uh, escape it. And I think, again, we're talking about this exhibit. It's very reflective of what you have in Africa. You mm -hmm. have the Western influence, Western influence in industrialization and all, but also in religion. You know, you have religions from the East, everything coming together, and it's still Africa. It makes it mm -hmm. beautiful. Sometimes we do have some skirmishes, you know, maybe some religious clashes, yeah. which is always sad no matter where it happens. Yeah. But by and large, yeah. people live together in peace, yeah. even from the same family unit, yeah. coming from the same religion. And uh, so that's it. So I think it's uh, important as a part of Africa to display something that talks about the yeah. various religions yeah. right. that are when, right and when there. we have skirmishes we need to make pearls don't we yes that's yes we <laughs> this is true that's where you go back and say ah oh, you know we, we need to accept for people the indicator because i know your lives are perfect in this, <laughs> of course. In this part of the world so maybe you don't need to do that <laughs> it's only people in yeah. the 
was the, the yeah, all those city. other people. It's all Chicago. those other people. Chicago people yeah. who live in <laughs> Chicago, they, <laughs> they have all the irritations. So yes, good. That's uh, that's a good yeah. that whether we make something beautiful right. out of anything yeah. ugly that comes our, yeah. our way. Thanks, Ibi. Thank you so much, <laughs> Mark. Sue Powell, as we stand here, you know, I've taken you away from your work of putting all together all these little informational, <laughs> you know, tabs that you have to put on here for all the things. So a lot of them aren't explained yet, but they will be when the exhibit opens up. But you had a particular amount of fun finding out what some of these items were, and that's why I wanted to put you in this corner, because we're standing next to uh, a chair that you had a little trouble deciding. What, what, what is that? You had to do a little research, didn't you? It's so unusual. It's actually in two pieces, because the seat has a bar that slips through the back there. And I was so curious about this, so I, I looked up uh, chairs in two pieces, you know, and, I, mm -hmm. and finally I started to see pictures that were very similar to this, and, I, and then I knew that I had discovered it. It's a birthing chair. No so kidding. women could sit low to the ground uh -huh. and get a little traction yeah. for giving birth. And I just thought that was fascinating. And it's hand carved, hand, hand carved hand birthing carved. chair. You can see the yeah. elephant on the top and, and the lion's head down here that's right and and it is it's 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 made with a very small seat close to the ground and you can see that someone can come up and actually get down and help her yes absolutely so i was really excited to find this particular uh piece because the owner did not know that that's what this uh -huh. was and so for me it's a joy to be able to say hey i yeah. found out what you and have. to tell the owner yeah yes, yeah. yes. and you, you had a, a similar experience here i did I just thought this was a fascinating piece when I first saw it because you can see all the little interpreted people, figures, human figures mm -hmm. on the door. And again, in researching it online, finding similar pieces, I discovered this is a Dogon culture piece mm -hmm. and it's a granary door. So their granaries are their tallest buildings for spiritual reasons mm -hmm. because the agriculture is so important yeah. to them. And the story of their family is symbolically told I'll by the dark. symbols that you see on the door. I'll be and I think that's lovely. I'm, I'm really yeah. excited to share that with the yeah. lady who owns this yeah. piece. Yeah, does she know yet? No. <laughs> That'll be fun, won't it? Yes, it will. Thanks, Sue. Now get back to work, okay? Thank you, I will. <laughs> Okay. Now there's over 300 exhibit items here, so you won't be able to see all this on this program. You have to come in here to the Decatur Area Arts Council and see uh, and see this exhibit. It's up here until or till July 26th. With another Illinois story in Decatur, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.